to put the All Blacks in the lead. A kick of 40 metres faces Grant Fox, the 10 metre line and the junction with the 15 metres in from this side. Just watch the tilt of the ball. It's just slightly forward. It's halfway between the old-fashioned Phil Bennett torpedo kick and the more conventional round the corner. Yes, and the thing that has impressed me about Fox, he takes a great deal of care about his kick in the same steps measured back, he takes a great deal of time and usually puts it between the poles. Spent time here yesterday just getting used to conditions, a feel of the ground and uh, kicking distances. Let's see if it's worked. Well, for a man of such consistency, it is surprising and it may well be a reflection on conditions here. Quite a quite breezy conditions as Evans takes that quickly straight to Schuster or Ridge rather. A little that lands perfectly, but again it's well caught and held up by Cardiff and delivered to Booth blindside, a little pass. And here I John the kick into space that will send Ford chasing after Ridge and Kerwin, but Ridge is the man that's back there. Again, that was good play by Geraint John because he took it on the narrow side and he'd noticed that Matthew Ridge had followed his kick ahead. So he put a long 50-meter kick and he gained a lot of ground. Well, it's Cardiff back on the offensive again. It's still tied at three points each, and there are just five minutes remaining of the first half. So those who wrote off Cardiff's chances. Tamed at the back by Watkins. Crothers does the retrieving work. Can he now support not quite there quickly enough as Bashup is offered the chance to get it into midfield. Schuster then decides on the kick towards the far touchline. Huge kick from Schuster, just a bit too far, in fact. That was outstanding play by Wayne Shelford, the, the New Zealand captain at number eight, because uh, Tim Crothers had the ball, but Shelford turned him and made that ball available for his backs. Cardiff three, New Zealand three. Four minutes remaining of the first half. As Watkins aims at this line out, aims at the back this time. And it's well won. Now then, Evans will test Ridge again, that probably is just a fraction too far, but Ridge is there, and he's taken by Ring, a lovely little kick from Ring, can Thomas get there, back there was Terry Wright, really was intelligent play from Ring, Act, reacted so quickly to that, saw the space. And good ball at last one by Cardiff Nalena, and this is a superb up and under, Look at the two Cardiff centres, they're chasing after it. They take Ridge, man and ball. I think Mark Ring will be a little disappointed. He didn't try and fling the pass out, but he tried the kick ahead and Wright got back just in time to minor. Relief for the All Blacks, then as Fox restarts. Storm knocks it down, Pellers looks for the way on the blind side. Indeed, knocks over opposite captain Shelford. That is, again, doing for the All Blacks, but they normally do to others. And Evans finds a little space. And yet another tester, Ring in pursuit, Ridge underneath it, Ring takes it. Australian rules style there, but he was that fraction offside. But really, this is a, a purple patch for Cardiff. Outstanding play by Cardiff, taking the All Blacks on their own game. Crothers driving at, knocking Shelford down lane, perfect ball back. And another good up and under, and only Mark Ring was on the yard of offside. And you uh, look at Crothers. He's given the ball to David Evans, but you can see Ring on your left. He was about three or five, four yards offside. Did well to get it, but good refereeing by Mr. Megson. The All Blacks have opted for the scrum then rather than the kick underneath the post. As Fox takes Bashup's delivery. And the pressure, Booth intelligently leaving the scrum half alone and pressurizing the outside half. Ian Watkins, formerly of Ebovale, but now of Cardiff. But taken by Jones at the front. And really, it's been one-way traffic. 
at that phase as Watkins comes away with space as he support though yes in the shape of colors now he needs to be rocked as Boole takes the short route supported by Edwards in comes Watkins so does Collins it inches short they all come in perhaps the backs might even join in Ian Watkins having an outstanding game so far for Cardiff they snatched that ball from Ian Jones drove towards the line and only desperate defence has kept Cardiff at bay. What a position for Cardiff, then. Half a metre short of that try line. And what pressure on the scrum to make it. Clean ball, good ball, that either the back row, the scrum half, or the three quarters can use. It's quickly out, lovely livery reverse pass, ring. Oh, what a good pass to Rea, short and straight. Collins quickly there, it's to Edwards, straight on goes to number eight, yes! It's not Edwards' first try of the season, but really it's the most important of his life. Mark Edwards scores Cardiff's first try and puts Cardiff into the lead. Anticipation of what might happen as Ray Mexon whistles and calls for half time. Really, who could have anticipated this? The scenes here at half time, really amazing. It's Cardiff 9, New Zealand 3, Phil Bennett. A magnificent performance by Cardiff. They've really knocked the New Zealanders out of the stride despite not winning a lot of line of possession. But they've rattled them, they've tackled well, and they earned their just rewards. Look at this lovely flick pass. For me, just watch this pass coming from the inside centre. Here's the long pass, but he flicks it beautifully through the man coming on the burst rear. Good tackle by Fox, but oh, back row play of the first class order. Collins there, number eight, Mark Edwards. Great determination. There's Stone driving him over. What a try for Cardiff. Outstanding. The lovely flick pass from Andrew Booth, just, there's the long pass for Mark Green, but no, it's a short little one on the burst by Mike Rea, he splits the defence, ever so quickly there is Richie Collins, there is number eight backing him up, Mark Edwards, inches from the line, can't hold him up, and he's over, Cardiff delighted. So, they must be having a warm-hearted little chat there, Phil Bennett, just looking at uh, that scoreboard, realising they're six points ahead, this situation then at half time, quite amazing here at the National Stadium. The half time scores will return to the stadium in this uh, British Steel All Black tour. Is that Cardiff lead the All Blacks by nine points to three? What a prospect then for the second half. Cardiff leading by nine points to three. I'm going to give you the result of the Ascot two o'clock race that was delayed. The Red Oaks Autumn Stakes over one mile. First was number eight, Noble Patriarch at 12 to one. Second, number six, Harbour Bar at 33 to one. Third, number five, after a photo finish this, Green's Leader at 12 to one. That was the two o'clock at Ascot. Now then, Steve Fenwick is in the studio with me. Steve, that was a very interesting first half. 9-3 to Cardiff. It was Cardiff's half, wasn't it? It, it definitely was. I'm just, uh I'm so pleased for Cardiff that they made all the pressure tell by scoring just at the right time before half-time. And indeed, they could well have been 15-3 up if Mike Ray hadn't missed a few kicks. Yes, uh, Mike Ray, perhaps uh, an off day with his, some of his place-kicking. What about the referee's interpretation there? New Zealand finding themselves pinned back in the first half. Uh, he has had a funny sort of game, hasn't well, he? Well, I, I can't fathom some of the referee's decisions myself, so they're probably as miffed as I am. New Zealand struggling, but uh, coming back. Cardiff playing a, a useful game. Well, the crazy thing is that they always uh, note the New Zealanders for their basic skills. And up to now, it's been Cardiff that have been doing the basics correctly. Their kicking has been excellent. Their tackling has been first class. So Cardiff doing the basics. We're going to go back to the national ground now. The uh, second half is just about to start. Our commentary team, Phil Bennett and Lynn Davis. Well, welcome back to the na National Stadium. If I said that the tour was looked forward to with great anticipation, at the beginning of the match, I can tell you that this second half is looked forward to with even, even greater anticipation because, because here we have a situation where the All Blacks are being led at the halfway stage. The last time that happened was in Australia uh, during last season when Queensland led them at the half-time stage, so it's not something that's uh, absolutely new, but here for Cardiff to have done this, Phil Bennett, is quite something. Incredible. Last time Cardiff won 1953 against the All Blacks, 
these lads are 40 minutes away from glory. The restart then, as that's taken by Fox. Watkins, a quiet little word with his scrum half, takes up his position, aims at the line-out. That's Collins that takes it, Stone is the man on the peel. Now it needs to be driven over, Shelford is there preventing possession coming back. It's finally, or slowly there, but the referee decides it was nudged forward. And a remarkable thing about this game is that this is the first time we've seen the any of the trainers on the field has been remarkably free of injury and uh, played at a fast and furious pace, Will Bennett. Yes, and Cardiff really have got stuck into the All Blacks. They haven't re really let, let them settle into a pattern. They've tackled well behind the scrum and they've tried to dis disrupt the All Blacks up front. Nothing serious. Howard Stone is the man that gets back to his position on the right-hand side of the lock position. A signal from Fitzpatrick tells Bashup to pace the ball in the scrum then it's up to the captain to drive ahead and Bashup finally the up and under and Ray and Ray well that's measured to perfection again and having kicked a penalty added a conversion tackled very well caught everything Ray is having a very pleasing afternoon The All Black 10 meter line as Fitzpatrick feeds, pushing, says the referee. And the crowd again greets a penalty award to Cardiff with a huge roar. They anticipate that there's a further or another chance to further increase that lead. It's now six points. This with a successful rear kick could make it nine. And it's from the spot that uh, Grant Fox missed his kick in the first half and it'll be interesting to see what kind of distance and what kind of accuracy Ray can get into this swirling wind. A man who before this game had scored 52 points for Cardiff, he was the leading scorer last season with 215, he's already kicked five on this occasion and really he'll have been disappointed by having missed two relatively easy kicks at goals. 57 points then, can that, this take it to 60? for the season 40 meters but just to the left of the post not well struck and problems for kickers persist how will the All Blacks respond to this situation then as Fox prepares to restart there are six points adrift we are three minutes into the second half and really a change of gear is essential for them as Wetton starts on that with a charge. And that's all black rucking. Standing off is Shelford, the captain, but can't get over the gain line. That Cardiff defence was waiting for that. It's retrieved though as Bashup this time feeds Fox on the blind side. And just a fine touch of Fox is there just to split the gap and just push Cardiff backwards. And so essential, it's always game line rugby for the All Blacks and uh, if Shelford can't get over it, then perhaps only a kick can do so. That's right, and yes, Wetton, Alan Wetton and Wayne Shelford trying to get across that advantage line for the forwards to drive on and leave good ball for the scrum half bash yet. The two sevens at the back there, Collins and Brewer. This is Basher, Fox, Schuster. On the charge comes Craig Innes from outside centre, the short ball back towards his forwards. Standing off is Fitzpatrick, but that was all so stationary, and that's not typically our black style. Normally they would have run 10, 15 metres to take that. Fitzpatrick wasn't prepared for that. They still won it, though. As Schuster now feeds Innes again. Lovely little roof, lovely hands. This is Kerwin, tackled, half tackled by Ring, finally dumped by Ford. The ball on its way, though. On the charge is Jones, good support from Williams. This is better for the All Blacks as Wetton takes it on. 
standing off again, it's Fitzpatrick, but again, it's rather pedantic as low with the giant tight head is sent really in back by also keen Cardiff tacklers Collins so quickly through the referee decides that he was offside Collins finds it difficult to believe but uh, I would have thought that the referee was very close to his to being right there And you said that New Zealand had to step up a gear, and they certainly did there with some good ruck in. It's Fox that places them and attempts yet again a penalty kick a goal. Three points to this man's credit already. His opening points to the tour. A kick of just under... 22 meters for him and really for someone of his stature the first glimpse we have of uh, Grant Fox's face as he seeks that inner calm the concentration absolutely essential the routine so mechanical runs strikes it absolutely true the deficit to three points and the All Blacks might be mounting something of a challenge to that Cardiff lead it's now Cardiff 9, New Zealand 6 and some good rucking by New Zealand but I think they should have released the ball to their backs there but again the hooker Fitzpatrick drove in when there wasn't really men expecting him there but they'd gone over the top and eventually they conceded a penalty and that would seem rather harsh on Collins on the, on the replay because the ball had been out there and it was Bashup's uh, slowness in reacting really that was the problem more so than Collins's over eagerness. The restart though is from Evans. Initially it was into space but that space quickly filled by Grant Fox and uh, he in fact calls for a mark and no real pressure there. And perhaps not the greatest kickoff we've seen for David Evans because he gave Fox plenty of time and really if he finds Toucher he should be around the halfway, meter, halfway line has a little look to the opposite side of the field just in case and there is some space there but uh, Fox ignores that and this time goes for safety <laughs> David Young number three a man really dragged from Canberra Club Rugby during the World Cup to perform for Wales as a as a 19 year old sets off on appeal there and indeed is the first man to support, but that wasn't straight, says the referee. Let's look at this front row confrontation then. Whitefoot and Lowe on this side. It's Patrick and Watkins, the two hookers. And again, Bashup, not for the first time during the game, as Booth looks to take that or to quickly run that penalty award, but is restricted by a shout from his captain who says just hang on a second let's put the ball into the corner and keep up the pressure on the All Blacks that was a better kick by David Evans into the corner slowed things down and again Cardiff on the attack well if the roar from the crowd doesn't encourage this Cardiff sign then nothing will because really the crowd is getting behind them keenly anticipating what could be such a major upset. Cardiff's one and only win over the All Blacks in 1953. The legendary Bledin Williams as captain on that day. What a day it would be for Tim Crothers as a man plucked really from second team obscurity to lead Cardiff. Thirty minutes to go though, and that's a long time as Shelford acts out the scrum half roll there. And the response from Fox. So predictable. And this is good play by Cardiff. Their ball and line it immediately call a two man. The variations from Cardiff, then. This is intelligent play. Needs to break up the game. And indeed, very nearly taken and opposed by Stone, but the ball wasn't straight, says the referee. It was knocked forward, in fact, by the first jump of Rowley. That's the all black 22 that you see there as Bashup again clears his lines. That's Bashup, the young man from Canterbury. 
22 years old and yet to play in a full international but has been on previous tours to Japan nine matches to his credit thus far jumping at two is zone for Cardiff as Watkins aims but again it's a Murray Pierce that gets across some fingers to it and through then comes Ron Williams first of all then the rest of that all-black tide in the rest of them come to clear that ball for Bashup standing off again rather stationary is Wayne Shelford there's not that momentum there before the ball is taken that uh, we normally associate with all black packs but it's still effective enough as now they drive Cardiff way upfield this time Ron Williams again surprised by that he wasn't anticipating a pass he was just getting to the ruck rather slowly Again, a lack of communication, I think, between the All Blacks there. Drove well on two or three occasions. I think it was perfect ruck ball, about to come back, but the scrum half gave it to the prop Williams, or I don't think was expecting the ball. Props don't uh, want the ball over much at the best of times. When, they, when they're surprised by it, it comes as a great shot. Jeff Whitefoot is the prop on this side for Cardiff. Number one, number six is the Cardiff captain. Tim Crothers and really his day has been made already with Cardiff having put up such a, a tremendous fight here it was anticipated that uh, really for the All Blacks this would be something of a, a walkover it's proved to be everything but that as in that scrum a little indiscretion means that Cardiff are awarded a penalty David Evans and again so effective, he's had an excellent match at outside half, preferred at centre for Wales, but here has really played out that pivotal role, stood his ground, picked his spot and done the right thing. Williams stands at the front, the All Blacks haven't used him greatly in the second half, 11 minutes gone, it's uh, Jones jumping at two, Pierce at four, it's Cardiff that win this one and Stone there, rather loosely to Booth, checks and uh, rather than offer a hospital pass into midfield decides to take on the responsibility himself perhaps not uh, finely well executed but probably the right option in, in yeah. under the circumstances yes and the difference with the, the both scrum arms Bashup has had a good clean ball but that was untidy ball for Booth the referee having insisted on two straight lines and a, and a clean gap between the two of them now watches as Fitzpatrick restarts the peel this is Ian Jones the young lock that's loosely done by the All Blacks Cardiff can't quite take advantage though and you see that was inexperienced there Jones took the peel very well went on the, the run and the ball was knocked on by newcomer again Ron Williams both shown a little bit of inexperience with the scrum in midfield and it'll be interesting to see what options are open to Cardiff here the centres split Evans decides right side ring side the kick beautifully collected by Riggs this young fullback he then takes the essential step backwards into his own 22 fires a beautiful right footed kick that takes play back to where we started and that for Cardiff is great disappointment they had all the options open there and perhaps didn't quite uh, drive the advantage home Fourteen minutes gone, then nine points to six. Cardiff lead in this first match of the All Black tour to Wales. Into midfield this time, this is Ring. Tries the dummy, Brewer was alert to it, but quickly there was Collins, and he's had a good match. This is, well, Watkins, hookers, shouldn't really chip left-footed. It's not done, and what a waste. He got to that position, and having done so well, really, to waste it in that way is really a shame yes Richie Collins had got done very well to get there very quickly to back mark back back ringer but I think Watkins will be a little disappointed he chipped the head there so the restart will come through the opposite hooker Sean Fitzpatrick it's kept in play by Fitzpatrick Fox under pressure from Cruthers tests Rayan yet again well, the referee decides that the tackle was high. It certainly wasn't late. It, uh, it happened as the kick was being put in. But the referee decides it was high and so penalises 
Tim Crothers, the Cardiff captain, and really for him to give away a penalty in that position will be very disappointing because it offers Fox a relatively straightforward kick at goal. It's some 27 metres from the Cardiff goal post. That's the town end of this national stadium here. That bank in the background, the East Terrace, isn't full, of course. But uh, really, the game has been well supported. Perfect conditions. Although perhaps the goal kickers, who have not had the best of days, might argue with that, that the wind is just a little bit awkward. The All Blacks then, having never as yet been in the lead on this tour, 19, 15 minutes gone of the second half, and Fox a chance to draw them level. Fox, known as the points machine. Really, well, he may lo lose that tag if he carries on in that vein. Neither he nor Rhea have really struck the ball all that well today. Evans has ring on his elbow, and ring is always an enterprising influence on that side, and uh, there's always that chance that the kick might be taken quickly. No, says Evans, though. The forwards will be given a chance, but the All Blacks will alert to that. This is Wetton driving over. Now it's set back. This is better from Fitzpatrick. Basher standing off his shelf, it checks inside, stays on his feet. Williams was the first there to help him. Now they drive to the post. Yes, they scored for the first time on tour. And they go into the lead. They've had to wait until 17 minutes of the second half and finally through that man Richard Lowe they've taken the one point lead there's a conversion to come and it could well be that the All Blacks have got the rustiness out of their system and it's now all systems go and Fox responds with his Eighth point of the game, two penalties and a conversion. So it's now Cardiff, nine points, New Zealand, 12. And this is much better as far as New Zealand are concerned. They drive it and they play the game at a much faster pace. You see the men, they're coming at speed. There's more speed coming from the hooker, driving in. And again, you see Shelford a little bit faster than they have been doing, driving in, making the ball, sucking in the Cardiff cover. Far more purposeful from the All Blacks, you can see just off your shot, there is number three, Richard Lowe, big man, no stopping him, under the post. And again, setting the ball back, and there's the hooker, Fitzpatrick, driving in, far quicker than they have been of late, making the ball available. There he comes, Shelford, the skipper, he's driving in, sucking in the Cardiff defence, who have tackled very well this afternoon, but it's underneath the post, good mauling technique, and there you'll see Lowe coming off, strong man, referee perfectly poised, three, four points. Megson standing at the back just to get a clear view of this line out as Watkins aims indeed aims for the back there but it, it's again taken by the All Blacks Mark Rowley was just fractionally offside although he protests but uh, just on the blind side there too quickly round on Bashup Fox with his team in front for the first time during the game. The All Blacks have a three-point lead. Fox has eight points to his credit and rather happier within himself. So we enter the final quarter then. As again, very untidily done and how the referee decides which one is which there is very difficult to make out. There were three, four, even five players on the wrong side. It's the indirect free kick, though. And Fox decides that he'll offer the forwards a chance to charge this one. It's the high, Gary Owen. It's into the 22. Ford has settled himself. Kerwin's the man that gets hands to it. Stone can't quite uh, gather. It takes a long time for anyone, really, to make a, a decision on that. Williams was the final man to get hold of it, but rather untidy. 
but that was good play by John Kerr in there because he went up for the up and under and tapped it back to make sure the ball stayed alive. Lowe just pointing out to the referee where the mark is. <laughs> Doesn't want the Cardiff front row inching in that scrum. A move on here behind the scrum. Kerwin comes into midfield. Stays on his feet. The support finally arrives. Now they drive on. This could well be another try. It is another try. The All Blacks really getting into top gear. This time it's Alan Wetton. Second try of the game for them. The flanker, one of two brothers here on tour. His 44th game in that All Black jersey. 23 caps, 22 caps to his credit. And now a try. Well, for Grant Fox, who I mentioned earlier on, I saw Jonathan Davis, of all people, salute by his uh, prowess as a kicker. Hasn't had the best of afternoons here today. Uh, not quite used to windy conditions, perhaps breezy conditions, and the swirl here complicated, perhaps. Whatever the distance, the routine is the same. And so often the result is the same as well. High and true. And the All Blacks now further increase that lead. They're now nine points ahead. It's Cardiff nine, New Zealand 18. And just watch for Joe Kerwin, the winger coming in, John Kerwin. The key to it all, he stayed on his feet. He was strong enough to hold that ball. And Wetton, who's been outstanding this afternoon, so powerful, charges over. Excellent try. We're back to midfield and as Ring goes across to the other side and indeed the response from Evans is to kick away from his forwards and they won't be pleased with that when they're struggling just to keep in the game, nine points adrift, perhaps that wasn't the wise restart from Evans. Evans who's played so well at play half this afternoon, I, I think he's got his kicking off a little bit wrong there, he put it straight in Matovic's hands and he immediately put it 40 yards and made the Cardiff forwards run the other way. Taken quickly by Cardiff, this is Booth, this is Ring, lovely little dummy, sends the Brewer on the wrong slant there, the testing kick, Ridge is there. What a beautiful catch from this young fullback. Stays there on his feet as well, offers his forwards a chance to regroup and to drive forward, retain the possession, the advantage at the scrum, and that's so typically New Zealand. Matthew Ridge, who's been uh, talked of as a great attacking fullback, there showed he can also take the high ball, got up very well, never took his eye of it, and made it available for his forwards. Interesting that Alan Phillips, the Cardiff coach, thought that Ridge might be the weak spot there because he's not used to defending, and they thought they might expose that, but it's not proven to be the truth. He's took it well this afternoon. This is Kerwin for the first time with some space, shakes off two tackles. Inside win is this is Schuster, he's got pace and support. This is Bashup, and finally, and it's not quite ready for that return pass, but that's more enterprising. Better play by the All Blacks, slick handling. Excellent running, but again, when the final pass went down, it was the two inexperienced players that let the ball slip. And I re recollect Alex Wiley being annoyed with some mistakes following a 50-point victory over Wales. So what do you make of some of the mistakes here? Well, it's frightening. Bashup, Fox, again, it's a little move in midfield. A long pass to Ridge into the line, a little grubber kick. It's right after it, but Rhea collects and packs the field. Was the tackle it? Yes, says the referee. Rea points to where he wants the penalty taken, and that's upfield. Rea explains to captain Wayne Shalford that it was a late tackle. The option was a kick on the spot or where the ball landed or crossed the touchline. And the All Blacks really hadn't driven straight, they'd gone across field, a neat grubber kick ahead, but excellent play by Rea, judged it perfectly, and as he gets the ball and grubber kicks, Ridge had committed himself, and he lay tackles the Cardiff full-back. So, Cardiff having uh, slipped in the second half, having led at half-time by six points, now find themselves trailing by nine points, they've changed their kicker as well, as Rea, who's uh, not had the best of afternoon's place kicking, but uh, David Evans will have the option on this 
count the, the outs and half will aim at goal hasn't scored for Cardiff this season which is something of a surprise as an outside half a kick of some 48 meters then and that will threaten the crowd say yes no doubting as the two linesmen as well respond so David Evans throws his hat into the ring throws the Cardiff hat into the ring and says yes we'll take up that challenge they close the gap to six points and it's still very much a contest with 25 minutes gone of the second half Cardiff having scored one try through Mark Edwards then the All Blacks having responded through tries by